to my film and TV channel. Hope you're all staying safe and well. We've got a video game to film conversion here. Yes, uh, don't always go down too well, do they? But uh, this one's got reasonable reviews, a bit mixed in places. But uh, we're going to look at something called Gran Turismo. Please, if you're new to the channel, push that subscribe button, push the bell notifications, everything film and TV, including reviews like this, information, vlogs, previews, lots of different things. So if you can jump on board, spread the word, uh, it'd be much appreciated. If you are pressing buttons, or have already pressed that button, you can just press that little thumbs up button, that like button. I'd be very grateful. Uh, that's it, I would be. You're right, Gran Turismo. Yes, two hours, 15 minutes. Yes, a little bit, you know, you know me and time. I don't want to bang on too much about it, but um, didn't really need to be that long. It's an action-adventure drama, biographical sports film, uh, directed by Neil Blomkamp. Of course, uh, dramatic licence, probably been used, but uh, yeah, a lot of uh, factual-based information in this and lovely bit at the end where you get all the people Pictures of the real guys and the uh, and the actor guys as well side by side, which is it's always nice to see, isn't it? And it's based, of course, on the racing simulation video game series of the game of the same name, and based on the true story of Jan Mardenborough, a teenage Gran Turismo player who was able to become a professional race car driver. You see, they, they say get you get nowhere playing games, do you? But obviously, for this lad, he did okay, didn't he? The film stars Archie. Matt Dequi in the main role. Yeah, he's okay. He's all right. He's, he sort of grew on me. <laughs> I wasn't overly impressed at first. Uh, you got David Harbour, who I like anyway. Orlando Bloom, who's about four foot six, based on what I saw in this. Darren Barnett. Jerry Halliwell. Fantastic. Horner. And Dim Juan Hons Honsu. And Grant is released in the UK on the 9th of August 2023. And yes, I'm recording this on the 9th of August 2023. There you go. So a limited theatrical release in the United States on August the 11th. So we got it before you lot. Well, there you go. Before a wide release on August the 25th. It's all released by Sony, this one. So what people think, there's not a lot of public views on this because there's not many people got to see early screenings, etc. But that's at the 8th of August 2023, Internet Movie Database have managed to rustle up 1,100 reviews and scores, uh, just over. Uh, 6.9 out of 10, that's not bad is it? 6.9 out of 10, I expect that to drop a little bit, but that's not a bad score. The critics, uh, not overly enamoured, 35 Rotten Tomatoes critics. And they've only given it a 57% positivity. They do, they do, they are really a bit uptight sometimes, these critics. I don't really know what they thought. We're going to have a look at a couple of, uh, of the guys in a minute. And it's averaging 5.5 .5 out of 10, which isn't fantastic. And it got 20 fresh and 15 rotten. Christine Zilko from IndieWire website said, Gran Turismo is what happens when talented filmmakers take on ridiculous projects and do a great job. Yeah, so he likes it. Owen Gleiberman from Variety said, it's made with a spontaneous humanistic grace and the racing sequences which dominate the movie because they're truly the story it's telling are dazzlingly directed and edited. Yes, yes, Owen, I agree. Clarice, Clarice, come on, come on, Clarice. Uh, Clarice Luffrey from The Independent. Nothing here feels real or tangible. You could argue that makes for a better recreation of the game, but then why bother heading to the cinema when you simply could stay home Home and hop on a controller. I think she, I think she's I think Clarice has forgot what a film's supposed to be. Um, odd comments for me. Uh, this at the end of it all is a feel good movie. It's about the underdog fighting adversity and coming out on top and cheering us all up. Uh, Clarice, cheer up. John Nugent from Empire Magazine. Again, a bit of a struggle. He said, despite some warm performances, it's very hard to ignore the feeling. This is largely just two hours of product placement. Perhaps, John, but perhaps you were looking for that as well in this film. But a little more, a bit more on the product placement in a moment with my views, which are here. Here's my views on this. Yes, of course, it is 20, 30 minutes too long for me. But, hey, it flew by. I quite liked it. As I say, I thought it was only halfway through and we were getting to the last half hour or so. So that's, that's good. That's a good sign for me. 
and it accomplishes for me what it what it aims to be, what what sort of film it is. Of course, PlayStation and Nissan will be a big part of it, as the critics said before about the product placement. I mean, it's it's a of course it is. It's gonna be, isn't it? It's it's a PlayStation game, and it's a Nissan company that obviously uh, put together the the car, the race inside of it. So yeah, of course it's gonna be there. But so what? I mean, it's it's we're gonna go create names just just to keep other people happy about product placement. But for me, it's not about that anyway. It's all about the boy come man in a classic sporting underdog making good story, which is what it is. And I'm a sucker for these. I love these. You know, whether it's American sports like basketball and baseball, I have no interest in whatsoever, but I just like the actual sporting, sporting side of it, about this motor racing, which again, I have very limited interest in. It doesn't matter. It's just a good, feel-good story. And uh, yeah, I just like them. Um, and we even get to see Jerry Hallowell, as we mentioned. So what's not what's not to like about this? Far better than I expected. I didn't expect to be this entertained by a film like this. I thought, and I'll be honest with you, I'm not a, I'm not a fan of films where cars take a big chunk of the of the story. I mean, I have. So you will be shocked by this. I'm sure you will. I may have mentioned it before, but I've not watched any any of the Fast and Furious films all the way. I've seen snippets. Uh, I think I might have watched the very first one uh, back in the day when I had a video shop and I might have had, had it on in the background, but I didn't actively sit and watch it uh, with a with a box of popcorn and a and a drink of coke. So yeah, I've nothing. I've no real. I probably missed out, but I just I just don't get the urge. I just don't get the urge with these car based things. So yeah, it surprised me. Pleasantly surprised me. I watched a few F one things over time, of course. Uh, I enjoyed those. But uh, yeah, I really did enjoy this and full marks for it. Very, very good game to movie conversion. There have been one or two. I think people were a bit, a bit, a bit unfair. I can, I can think of uh, three or four offhand. I won't name them now and embarrass myself. But uh, it is a very good game to movie conversion and well worth the watch, guys. And as I say, some of those critics have been far too critical. Well, that's the job, I suppose. If it was to market, I would. If it was rotten tomatoes, I'd definitely be fresh, as you probably gather. Uh, if it was Metacritic, I'd definitely be positive, as you probably gather. And if uh, Internet Movie Database, as they tend to do, unless I block them because I get fed up of being mired, ask me for a score, uh, I would give this seven point five out of ten. Not bad at all. Let me know what you thought, guys. Uh, it'd be great to hear from you. Till we meet again. That's one thing. Don't please stay safe, everyone. Bye for now.